Oh, good lord, octopus. In this episode, Toby finds out what happens when H.G. Wells meets Tolkien in City of Steam. These things make really horrible noises. I get post-apocalyptic in Indie FPS Ravaged. That's gonna hurt. And Jamie finds out whether Numco can really turn the cover-based shoot-em-up genre on its head in Inversion. Welcome to Killabits! We are the new and improved what was once called Kill Screen, um, but we're no longer. That's what happens when you get a cease and desist. Mm. <laughs> what was okay. the one you wanted? Uh, the super happy Toby Funtime show. It was taken. Starring Jamie. <laughs> no, sorry, featuring Jamie. Oh, okay. Anyway, we're back at loading, uh, so what's everyone been playing? Well, I've just spent the last two weeks in San Diego staring at beautiful women on the beaches and also watching the colourful characters outside the convention centre at Comic Con. <laughs> That's very true. Anyway, so what have you guys been playing? Uh, what, pretty much Battlefield, to be honest. Me and Luke, apart from he buggered off to America, so I've been playing it on my own. Uh, we've been playing, playing Battlefield 3 and I've just upgraded to Premium. Did you get all of the, is it four updates? Four of um, the expansions? Four expansion packs, yeah. 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 You, say uh, you say expansion packs, what you mean is that you're buying things that should have been in the game anyway. No, the, the extra maps, and they are putting in, in the next is Armoured Kill is the biggest. Armoured Kill, and then there's two more, which we don't actually have any details for, which is why I'm a bit sketchy about premium, because you're essentially paying for something where you have no idea what you're getting. It's very true, but I mm. probably would have bought it anyway. Just like, of course, of course you would. Yeah, exactly. I've been playing Spelunky. What's Spelunky, please? Spelunky is... it's a game. You'd know this yeah, if yeah. you had any knowledge. It sounds like Spunky, so please it, educate me. Okay. It sounds like Spelunker, which was an old NES game. Alright. Okay, but it, it's it's a roguelike platformer with Castlevania's whip physics. Well, I say physics. Whipping animation. It all feels very deliberate, even though it's procedure plus randomly generated, <laughs> and it, it's a lot of fun. And uh, I've also been playing Blobs. What? What else? To oh, Theatre Rhythm. I also played Theatre Rhythm. I personally liked it, like very, very much. Yeah. Like I enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun. But at the same time, there were just some tracks that weren't in it that should have been. And, like, it's the first 3DS game with DLC. Mm. And, like, 90p for a song that should have been there already is kind of a... Well, has it got the Chocobo song? Of course it's got the fucking Chocobo song. What are you complaining about? What am I complaining about? I'm complaining about the other six hours. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Were you playing any games while you were in San Diego? I was playing a couple of games, yes. Uh, as you can imagine, I had pretty crappy internet at the motel I was staying at. Very unstable. But I did get a chance to play Endless Space. Which is basically, how can I put it, a SimCity in space with card battles as well. You colonise planets, uh, build a population, blah, blah, blah. You okay. get, again, if you're into that, you're into that. Is, is it anything like having sex with with space? Um, no? Let's I'm, move on. I'm trying to think of some joke with a vacuum there going on. Okay, right. Yeah. Well, I've been playing Dungeon Twister. Isn't it a board game as well that exists in real life? That would make sense, actually. It would, I it, think it, it does. Looks like it, it looks like it could be a board game. Mm. Um, and also, I've been playing Rainbow Moon. Which is... By the name, I wasn't taken. You weren't taken by this at all, just by the name. Um, like some fucking My Little Pony shit. That's what we thought. Um, but actually, boot it up, and it's a, a nice little game. It's uh, old but new graphics, uh, turn-based combat. It's fun. Oh, I've also been playing Tower Wars as well. Hmm. Exactly as you would expect, tower defence. Yeah. In come the enemies, pop down your bits and bobs, defend, 
you're done. Easy. If you like tower defense games, play them. So, if any of you have seen the video that was released a couple days ago, I've been playing City of Steam. It's a game. They're all games, that's what we're doing here. Yeah, good one. Okay, so City of Steam, what is there to say about it? Well, one, it's a browser-based MMO. Two, it's a lot of fun. And three, it looks nice. But what's it actually all about? Well, the game itself feels more action RPG. I mean, W, S, A, and D work as your movement keys if you so choose. And the combat in the game feels sort of very akin to Diablo in that you've got sort of hot keys that you mash and you have to click on enemies repeatedly to attack them. And all in all, it comes out really well. Each of the characters has three fighting styles. You can do the, the dual wield, you can do the shield and um, sword, or you can do the kind of massive, almost Final Fantasy style sword uh, off the back. Multiple skill trees to go down. And it all has this really nice action-y feel, almost a, a sort of veneer of brown fun. The whole game is brown. It's a steampunk game, you know? You, you can't ex uh, steampunk, industrial age, whatever. Um, just to, to clarify, we, we like to call it an industrial age fantasy. Either way, I got to grips with a pre-alpha, and I sort of, I ran a couple of dungeons, because uh, everything's instance-based. Set 200 years ago with flying octopuses. <laughs> you go through sort of all the social stuff in the actual, the city of steam, the nexus. Uh, there's a bar, we can go check out the bar. And uh, I'm sorry, over there Luke's playing Ravaged and it looks really good. But we'll get onto that later. Uh, City of Steam also looks really good, which is incredible because it's on the Unity 3D engine. All of the assets are streamed rather than downloaded. Which means that you can launch the game with, I think it's 2.1 megabytes in that you, you can get into the tutorial from the start with 1.2 megabytes. Oh, that was the scene that I was saying is just, just over a megabyte. The fact that the game exists at all is an impressive feat. Uh, the main body of the development was done in China by people who worked on sort of these pay-to-win games. And even though this is a freemium game and that it's free to play, but then you can upgrade to various premium features, Nothing is locked off to you. It's all stuff like uh, socketable weapons, which change the actual appearance of the weapon, or uh, expanding your party size so you can get another five or six people to raid a dungeon with you. And it makes sense not to put anything behind a paywall, because if there's anything in the world that is killing games at the moment, it's paywalling. If you can receive it for free in City of Steam, you can pay to get it quicker. And that's the only difference. So if you've got time on your hands, then you can basically become the king of the city of Steam, which you should definitely try and do. Uh, there's an alpha. When this goes live uh, on the 1st of August, there'll be an alpha out. So I would wholeheartedly recommend that you sign up because they, they are throwing keys at people. They want people to experience that game, and it's that passion that comes over particularly well. At the same time, it does, it, it's got the limitations of an alpha browser-based MMO, but the fact that it does it at all is impressive. And the graphics are really shiny, aren't they? Yeah, they're really shiny, especially when you consider it's all done in the Unity 3D uh, engine, which isn't something that an MMO's ever been tried in before. Everything's always been sort of Java-based. And because of uh, it being in Unity, it allows you to stream in all of the assets, meaning that when you start it up, it's like a megabyte. How much was it to download? It, it, it isn't a download, it oh, just no. it streams. It's like, I mean, it, it is a download technically, if mm. you want to get like pernickety about it, but it's it's like watching YouTube in the, okay. it doesn't like it doesn't download the video in its entirety at the start. It streams while you're playing so it will be very dependent on a good connection. To it's run. very, very different. Mm. Like it's an MMO. If you don't have a connection, Not they're stable. You can't play it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's very Diablo. You click on stuff, and that's the game. Cool. Except, like, you're not, not only are you clicking on things, but you're clicking on... <sighs> they don't like the word steampunk, because that gets, like, people's panties in a twist. It's an industrial age fantasy. Which means, okay, steam that people are dressed as punks in a world powered by steam. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And there's goblins. Yeah. And there's, <laughs> there's, there's, there's goblins and orcs and no black people. Really? I shit you not, there is not a... bastards. No, no, there's green people to make up for Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I don't know, if I lived in a world where people were just white or green... Michael Jackson's song wouldn't make sense. It doesn't matter if you're green or white. It doesn't have the same ring to it. No, it doesn't. First person shooters. The industry is rife with FPSs these days from all kinds of developers bringing out all kinds of unique ways to shoot and kill people from a first-person perspective. Think FPS, you think Call of Duty. You think linear, hand-holding, corridor shooters, which basically play the game for you. It's safe to say that the industry has now been compromised, and that FPS genre is now a big corporate machine, churning out games every year, and they're all beginning to copy each other. I'm getting tired of it, I'm sure you are too. So I've been playing the beta of Ravaged, and from what I've seen so far, it looks like a very refreshing prospect indeed. Now, getting straight down to it, Ravaged is a class-based shooter, which means you have different classes to fulfill different roles on the battlefield. They're pretty much your standard affair. You have your infantry grunt with the assault rifle. You have the more up-close and personal saboteur-style class. You then have the anti-vehicle class, your sniper class, and then a support class as well, which either has a shotgun or a minigun, depending on your faction. Now, moving on to the maps. These are nice, big, and diverse. And now, when I say big, I don't mean big as in... Caspian Boulder from Battlefield 3 big. I mean big as in if you get a bit tired of just running in a straight line into combat all the time, then you can go around and explore the maps and actually have quite a high chance of finding quite a cool vantage point for you to snipe at, a place to sneak around to the enemy base. The maps are interesting, they are well designed, and they allow you more time to think, which is not what many games are doing these days. It's definitely something which I am crying out for more and more. Ravaged also features a good variety of vehicles with more to be added as the beta continues. So far we have some buggies, ATVs, gyrocopters and so on and so forth as well. Now I'm not sure whether this is part of the beta itself but the ATVs in particular can be quite difficult to control. The turning on them is quite laggy. Not sure whether this is intentional or not. The gyrocopter in particular is one of those vehicles which is very hard to master, but of course if you can overcome that challenge and you do master it, then it is all the more satisfying because it's one of those things where you can dominate the battlefield with. So adding in the element of challenge is always something which I welcome, especially in such a saturated genre. Now, one thing I like about Ravaged is that it's colourful, it's pretty, it's vibrant to look at, so it's an attractive game to play. And secondly, it seems to have soul and spirit to it. You can tell the, the developers cared when they, when they were making this game, which is more than can be said for quite a few other games out there. The gunplay in Ravaged is fine and dandy. I do feel that the weapons can kill you a bit too quick, especially particular ones in the assault rifle class. But of course, that's something which can be changed. Now, it's worth noting too that Ravaged is a multiplayer online-only game, so there's no single-player campaign, which means all the focus is going to the online experience, which I can only see as a good thing. Now, in my opinion, the game itself is very well-balanced, it's fun to play, and it also seems to be geared towards more competitive gaming as well. One other thing to note is that this is a game that requires you to use your brain. You have a big open world out there with many options. You are not funneled down a straight line. You can take numerous vehicles and walk numerous paths. Go crazy. Use your imagination. See what the maps and the worlds have to offer you. That's what they're there for. Now, being a beta, Ravaged does have its fair share of issues. For example, it will randomly crash for no reason, or you can't reload your gun which is obviously quite detrimental to you. But all in all, the gameplay is very, very good. And considering how worn out of the genre I am, I actually have quite high hopes for Ravaged. I fucking see you over there. We got a hold of another camp. I, I, I'm really, I, I like the look of Ravaged. It is a really, it's a really good game. I mean, I've played 
the old school games for quite a while on PC now, and this really goes back to how it was before, which we've been missing. There's no yeah. way in hell that Tyson's going to play it. No. I was going to say, there's a, lot of Kickstar there's a lot of Kickstarter projects that are sort of like that. It's the things that people have been asking for, but studios have been like, nah. So what is your big aversion to Kickstarter? Because obviously a game like Ravage has come from it, which you said looks like a good game. Yeah, I have no problem with Kickstarter in itself. Mm -hmm. The thing I have pro like a problem with are the idiots <laughs> that give their money to things like the feminist frequency gaming thing, which is like, it's women versus tropes in video games. a good point. I hate to break it to you. Okay, but game characters aren't people. They, they, they are characters. Okay, if you're gonna start complaining every time that like, oh no, that, that woman's got big boobs. So what, look, like, Marcus Phoenix has arms the size of barrels. Mm. Okay, there's just as much like of a problem. I'm looking forward to the Ouya. Yes, me too, me too. I think the consoles are in dire need of updating. Okay, describe what Ouya is, because me and Taz have yeah. no idea. Okay, Ouya is, it's a hun It's an affordable. How affordable? A hundred dollars, that's like Actually, 50, mm. 50, 50, 60 quid for a console with a really nice looking gamepad that's only a concept, but the, the trailer lies to you a couple times. Uh, and you plug it into your TV and you can play anything developed like any, it's an open console, you know, you don't need to get a dev kit for, say, PS3 or Wii. You can mm -hmm. just be like, okay, cool, I know things, put them all together. And just keep going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, uh, you can, it's all going to be sort of plug and play, mm -hmm. and it's going to have a dashboard that looks a lot like Microsoft. So it's a cheaper alternative for someone who wants to have a go. It's a cheaper alternative for someone that wants to play indie games or develop indie games and get them onto a television rather than a monitor. Mm-hmm. Which, they don't have to go through yeah. the rigmarole of you know, yeah. Xbox yeah. Uh, yeah. They, they signing off on the They don't have right. to fucking deal with Microsoft being like, no, you can't create your virgin killing based RPG. Okay, <laughs> there, there's. It's all. Which it, you're working on, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's very, very. It's very First Amendment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's sort of. It, it opens up the industry to a whole new audience. You've been playing something that's not <laughs> scripted. This is not scripted at all, we promise you. I, what? You have been playing something. <laughs> you need to it's, tell us. I say oh that, I'll just... <laughs> <laughs> Those eyes are much. It's not on a pencil. You're never going to let me finish my sentence, <laughs> no, are you? No, your sentence has been assassinated. <laughs> Taz, you go. Don't worry, go. I was going to ask you, you've been playing something that's not on a... PC. Oh, oh, not on a PC? Yeah. No, I haven't. No, that's true. It's all been PC based because you're all losers. Well, you because you don't have it. You have a Mac. That's a Mac. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, no, I've been playing Inversion. Apparently, Isaac Newton was wrong about the whole Apple falling downward thing. The world's moved on from that. Now, we've got floating rubbish bins. No matter what kind of game you're playing, messing around with gravity is fun. Running through a post-apocalyptic city, shooting muscle-clad alien dudes to suddenly have gravity decide it doesn't want to do what it's supposed to. And hey presto, you're walking on the side of a building. Inversion is a third-person cover base shooter, exactly like all the other ones we've seen in the past couple of years. Its only saving grace is that you can control gravity. You do this with the Gravlink, a device brought to Earth by the Lutadors. The Gravlink has the ability to increase or decrease the gravity around a targeted area. This is especially useful for making enemies float from their cover or pinning them to the floor while you proceed to empty clips into them. You can also use the Gravlink to drag enemies towards you and throw items such as rubble and trash cans at anyone who looks at you in a funny way. But everything else in the game we've seen before. I honestly thought that I was playing Gears of War. The, the weapons are the same, the characters are the same, the story's the same, even the cover system and the controls. You play as Davis Russell, who is essentially a skinny Marcus Phoenix. Davis and his partner are two cops who are patrolling their city when shit hits the fan. Civilians are getting shot, buildings are getting blown up, you know, the usual. Basically, they fight their way through the city to find Davis's daughter. Now, does this sound familiar? Maria? God damn it, it's me, Dominic! And the first time I saw the Lutadors from Inversion, I thought they actually were the cogs from Gears. 
They even come up from the ground in drilling machines, which you have to blow up with a grenade. I mean, come on guys, a bit of originality would have been nice. The script is cheesy as hell. It reminded me of any 90s action film, with the main character Davis slipping into an emo state of self-pity and his buddy Leo picking him up with lines such as Hey, there are survivors out there. We'll find her. Yeah, she's still there. Moving on to the multiplayer, I got this game on PS3, and personally I don't think that PlayStation gets as many players online as Xbox does, but even so, I tried playing a simple bit of deathmatch and I found one person online. One. I even quit out and tried to find another match, and I found the same one person. Maybe this will pick up, and I hope it does, because this game deserves more. To keep it going, it does have a co-op mode, which means you can go through the campaign with a friend with no differences to the story. I know I've been harping on about all the similarities to Gears of War, but then again, the developers have taken a format that works and just added bits to make it their own. Despite its faults, Inversion is a good game. It's challenging, or mildly challenging, and it will keep you entertained for a good couple of evenings. Uh, I'd probably leave it a while to, to drop in price, or rent it uh, over the weekend, because that's pretty much all you're going to play it through. But I'm intrigued to see how other games in the future will take gravity physics, and see where they take them. Time to wrap things up, I think. Uh, as we're filming this now, we've got uh, City of Steam Alpha going on, and we've also got the last weekend of Guild Wars 2, which we're going to be talking about in our next episode. And what else is everyone looking forward to playing? Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition. <laughs> God, that sounded sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to point out that you're a casual. <laughs> I'm a casual. Have you ever completed Dark Souls? No. Then your vagina will be salty with the Prepare to Die edition. Well, it's going to have higher frame rates, prettier graphics, and it is a good game. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that you won't be salty in the vagina. <laughs> okay, you, you're just going to be like, hey, hey, cool, what's going on? Oh, uh, that's, that's going to be you. That's exactly me. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly me. It's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. A, yeah I, I fucking love Dark Souls, but not having a proper computer, like I, I call my laptop Sparky because it catches fire every night. <laughs> no, I, I mean legitimate fire. Probably true. No, it is true. I, I never say anything on kill screen that killer bits. Oh! oh. A, sorry, I, I had to cease and desist that sentence. Mm. Okay. Uh, the thing so we have got a replacement for Sparky now, haven't we? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we do. The, the alienware, what is that? Thank you. Yeah. What, Thank you, Dale. So much. Thank you. you. What? What is that? Who gives us things? Kind people who pity us. Yeah, it is really pity. <laughs> God bless, give them that. Yeah. Anyway, well, what are you looking forward to? Ah, uh, I'm looking forward to Watch Dogs. No. Watch Dogs. I am looking forward to it. I am looking forward to No, I am I'm looking forward to Watch Dogs as well. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Have you seen the Watch Dogs trailer? No. Mm. Oh my God, do that. talk about that when it's going to come out. I'm actually looking forward to Sleeping Dogs, another canine themed title <laughs> with an excellent sandbox. Okay, you play as a Chinese gentleman on the island of Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. uh, you're an undercover cop, you get to beat people up, and also I'm looking forward to Darksiders 2, which hopefully is, like, like the last one was literally just Zelda of War. Zelda of War. Yeah, like, it's just a cross between God of War and Zelda. That sounds good to me. Oh man, it's fucking... Yeah. I, it's the smile that's okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, okay, it's a great game, but it's really laboured. How do we... Uh, the, all the character design, it looks like World of Warcraft. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, you, yeah. you play as War, who's got a sword, and that's it. That's yeah. the game. That then, you get, then you get a hook shot, and I was like... <laughs> <laughs> like... It was like 2001 A Space Odyssey, I was just like... <gasps> Please tell me you guys have seen that at least. <laughs>
No? <laughs> oh, right. Oh, <laughs> anyway, Jamie, Jamie, go. Uh, I'm looking forward to Armored Kill from Battlefield. Basically, yeah, lots of vehicles, uh, tanks. The biggest map that Battlefield has ever had. So they say, but they said this about Operation Firestorm as well, which essentially was a tiny cluster of buildings in the centre of a big open space for jets, so we yeah, will see. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. But oh, okay. the, the vehicles that you, you get, I mean, you've got more buggies, you can shoot from the back of buggies, yep. you've got more helicopters. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be wicked. And if you haven't bought premium, buy it because then you get it for free. And that way, EA will have all your money. Mmm. Ah, uh, fucking EA. Anyway, what else do we have? <laughs> we have on the day that we're going to actually be airing this, we've got Deadlight coming out. And that's on Xbox Live. And looks all right. And we've also got the Minecraft 1.3 update. <laughs> Can we please concentrate on the one that's a game? Minecraft is a game. It's an amazing game. And no, Minecraft is Lego for people that can't afford bricks. Deadlight is a side-scrolling film noir zombie game. Fuck you guys. That's what I'll be doing. Yeah, zombies it's in Minecraft. Flashback with zombies. Yeah, it? exactly. Okay. Oh my god, it just looks so sexy. I, I'm, I'm really loving it. <laughs> that was the most disturbing face you've ever pulled out of all really the episodes that we've yeah. done. No, like, it just, it looks incredible. Okay, it, it does, it looks like flashback with zombies. Okay. And then Minecraft. Hopefully you don't gonna put this block again. Brilliant, pick up mud, that's the game. Pick up mud and punch trees. So don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Good job. Oh, and follow us at Twitter. At yep, Facebook, etc., etc. Yeah, we are at, at the Killer Bits. Just go to the Killer Bit. We might even have a Bebo. Sure. Shall we sign off? I was going to say. Well, either way, yeah. we will have much more exciting content and entertainment for you. Yes, I'd like to find out that Toby's tier list of social network is plenty <laughs> exciting. <laughs> And we will get more professional as we go on, I'm sure. Promise. Especially with the we promise. No, we're getting we promise. We will, we will, we're in par with Minecraft's story mode at the moment. Story mode? Yeah. Campaign. <laughs> <laughs> when Minecraft gets a story, we will be professional. When we'll Minecraft gets a story, I will eat my hat. <laughs> oh, don't I have a hat? Is that what I was saying? Was I saying Minecraft will never get a... Bye, folks. Bye! Bye.